Hello. In today's video, I'm going to talk about embroidery floss, specifically about knowing how many strands of embroidery floss to use in your work. Well, the simple answer is there is no simple answer. It's totally at your discretion. But there are some guidelines that I can give you to help you with your selection. But first, let's take a look at embroidery floss and some of the different types that there are. We're not going to delve too much into that today, but we're just going to talk about different types and getting a feel for the type that you like. So there are different ways to purchase embroidery floss. You can get it in the skein here, and these are eight and three quarter yards or so. Again, it might vary depending on the company, the brand, the type of embroidery floss. They're usually made of cotton, but then there are some that are cotton blends. There are some that are metallic, that have a very high percentage of either acrylic or polyester. There's solid colors, there's gradients, there's all these different aspects to embroidery floss. In today's video, we're just gonna stick with how many strands to use. The main thing that I find with embroidery floss is it is completely subjective. It's at the discretion of the artist using it. So I'm a sucker for embroidery floss. If I see embroidery floss that I like because of the vibrant colors, well, I have to try it out. When I saw these, I thought these were a fantastic idea. They're stored just on a little spool, just like thread, but it's embroidery floss. However, I don't like the formula of this particular brand. This is an anchor brand, but that's just, again, totally subjective. My personal favorite is the DMC floss, and I just love a lot of things about it. I love the color selection, I love the sheen, I love the feel of it when I'm doing my embroidery or my stitching. There are other companies that make different brands, and they're hit or miss for me, at least in my experience. My go-to, though, is the DMC, and they have all sorts of models of this. To store embroidery floss, if I'm using it, I'll store it on my little bobbins, other than that, I just keep it right in the little skein or the little spool that it comes in. Now the skeins have different drawbacks and different positives. The standard little plastic bobbin, or sometimes it's cardboard, is fine. It works, you get to see what colors you have and approximately how much you have of your embroidery floss and what's left. The trouble is it can kink if, it's, if you wrap it and leave it too long. You can see you get these little kinks. They're not permanent. You might be able to um, work them out while you do in your embroidery, but that's just something that some people don't like about these little bobbins. These I just think are adorable. They might have some kinks too, but they come in so many fun different shapes that to me, it's worth it. It, it brings a smile to my face to use these funny little bobbins, so I do. So let's say that at this point, you have the embroidery floss you wanna use. It's either the kind that you really like, or it's the kind that you're determined to use. So from there, the question is, how many strands do I need? Well, embroidery floss typically has six strands that are gently wound together. They can be used all six, or they can be separated using one, two, three, four, five, or even six. Professional textile artists like to separate their strands. Even if they're gonna use all six, they'll separate all six and then put them back together and thread them through their needle and just stitch as if they had stitched right from the skein. I tend to not separate my strands. If I'm gonna use six, I just clip it from the skein. Again, it's preference and there'll be times when I will separate them, but most of the time I won't. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. You might find that separating the strands and putting them back together gives a much more desired result. Now, separating the strands is called stripping. So you wanna strip the embroidery floss of the threads and then put them back together. And I'll show you an easy technique for doing this. Now, what I like to do when I stitch with my embroidery floss is, is tempting as it is to use a very long strand so I don't have to re-thread my needle, I always find it gets me into trouble. That doesn't mean I don't do it, but I really know that I shouldn't do it. So usually the rule of thumb is anywhere from 12 to 24 inches should be your strand that you embroider with. Another quick rule of thumb is if you take your embroidery floss from your skein and you just create that length from your wrist to your elbow and snip it, you'll have the appropriate length of floss to use in your stitching. Now from there, you just wanna hold it right by the throat of the floss. I, what I like to do is just 
take a length of it, maybe an inch or two from the top, and I hold it just like this, and I'll try and keep it at an angle for the camera to really see. What I find really helpful is just to tap it a few times, and this just separates the embroidery floss just enough that I can go in there and take a single strand. So when I find that single strand, and you want to separate them one by one, I just gently pull it up and as you can see it's all winding down and bunching up and then when I've separated my strand it kind of comes unbunched and I just gently straighten it out again. In most cases I want to separate more than one strand because I'll work with two or three. I can work with one but if I want to work with three I'm going to separate all three. So again I pull just one strand at a time Sometimes I get two, so I'll go back, tap it again, just trying to get that one strand. Again, I pull it up gently. I don't have to go terribly slow. And then I straighten it out once again. Now you could do this with all the strands that you want. And if you're working with six strands, well, you'll get a smoother result if you separate all six strands. Personally, I don't tend to do that if I'm doing six strands, a little bit out of laziness, but just out of convenience that I can just pull my strand out of my skein and use it. So after they're separated, they're gonna be used right away. I don't really like to wrap these really delicate and thin streads on a spool or a bobbin. So I'll just keep them on my work surface and use them up. If I do have some left over, I just gently wrap it around my hand if I have to stop working or run some errands or something. And I'll just keep it wrapped up and I'll just keep it in a plastic case that I'm using for my embroidery floss just to keep it together so the wind doesn't blow it around or anything like that. But for the most part, once I separate my strands, I try and use them very soon after. But I did wanna show you how beneficial it is to separate the strands. So here I've made just a sampler to show the difference. When I start with one strand or I stitch with six strands, you get a totally different result. The strand, the single strand is so delicate and almost lacy, I think. As you increase, the stitches are more substantial and very useful, but they're completely different. The results, the way they'll blend together and the final product you can get from separating your strands and only using a few strands. So here for one strand, I did a lazy daisy stitch. It's very airy, it reminds me of dragonfly's wings. I did a plus sign, three stitches, a French knot, and then a beautiful gradient. And you see how those gradients of three colors of purple really blended nicely and created a lovely result. I did the same thing with three, and I got still a nice result, but it's a little chunkier. And then on my blend for six, well, you can see it's very chunky. It's not a bad result, it's just a completely different result. And as an artist, when you use your tools, you'll wanna know how to use your tools appropriately to get the results that you want. You can see on the Lazy Daisy Stitch from one strand of floss to six, the different results, as well as the plus signs and the three stitches and French knots. So from here, I took six strands from the skein and just stitched them, doing a stem stitch from here to here. It's a nice enough stitch. You can see the thread is sticking out in different parts and I could play with that just to get it a little tighter. But here I separated six strands and then put them back together in the needle and then stitch them. So they're both six strands, but the top one is six strands where it was just used from the skein, whereas these were separated and then put back together. And you can see it's just a smoother result overall. So then the question becomes, well, how do you know what number of threads to use for your project? If you're using a pattern for embroidery or cross stitch, you'll want to follow that pattern, what they suggest. There is discretion and you can modify it, but that's a great place to start. Another thing that influences the number of strands you use is the material, the thickness of the material. So I have heavyweight material here, which is just a piece of quilted fabric. You can see the back. I have a standard piece of material here that I'd use. It's like muslin, 
but regular weight. And then I have a very piece of lightweight muslin here. It's very airy and very transparent. On the top arc, I used one strand of embroidery floss and I have a beautiful result. It's delicate, it's sharp, and very clean. On the second one, I used three strands. And you could see how it becomes a little more bold. The last one I used six strands and I got a very definite result. Now for the six strands, the only one to, in my mind that really stood out as the way to go was this thick heavyweight fabric. They're all acceptable, but looking in retrospect, it's clear to me that this one looks neatest. The three strands look neat and there's contrast with the one strand. If I move to my standard weight fabric, the six strands is very bulky. It's not a bad look, but it certainly isn't the only look that you might want. The three strands works out very well. There's a nice contrast there. And of course the one strand, while it works well, is very delicate. So if I was looking to make something very delicate, this is the way I'd go. Now on my super lightweight fabric, the one strand, well, to me that's perfection. It looks beautiful and there's nice contrast. Using three embroidery strands worked out well, but you can see it's not as polished and neat as that one strand. And that six strand is a very heavy look. It might be useful for some techniques, but overall I'd say I'd stick with the one strand here, the three strands here, and the six strands. Unless there's a specific feeling I'm trying to get across in my work. So therefore the rule of thumb with separating embroidery floss and knowing how much to use at one time is the fewer strands, the more delicate your work will be. And the more strands you use in your stitching, well, you'll get a thicker result. So you'll find that some people prefer to use three strands while others prefer six, and even others might prefer just one strand, a single strand. There's nothing wrong with using all six, and there's nothing wrong with exclusively using six. But you do have options. If you have embroidery floss, you can separate it and use just a few strands. Now there are general rules of thumb with stitches and which stitches to use with which number of strands. Again, test them out and see how you like them. Now I'll include a chart at the end of this video that you can take a screenshot of so that you can get a rough idea of which stitches coincide with which number of strands. Again, it's a rule of thumb, so take it with a grain of salt and see which ones you like to use that way. But what I tend to do is the heavier the stitch or where I want a lot of texture, I'll use more strands. So for a back stitch, or if I want a nice soft blend, just like I showed in my sampler, I'll just use one or maybe two strands of thread. For something like a French knot or a blanket stitch, I'll use all six. And there are days when I'll just use all six strands exclusively. So I hope you found this video helpful and that it helped you to figure out a starting point, a springboard, for knowing how many strands of embroidery floss to use in your work. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And if you have any suggestions about the number of strands that you prefer for a specific stitch, please comment below and share that with us and let us know what you think. Be sure to click on that red bell to subscribe to get notified of all of my classes. Thanks for joining me today.